and how he worked in my life the past couple of years. And the guy is you were seeing from the first one in Psalm 145, 18. And it says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. And the second one is Proverbs 19, 21. And that says, Many are the, the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So, when I was really young, my grandma and grandpa, both sets of them, always took me to church. Like, I was always really big in the church. And then, like, I always loved going to church. I always loved having the church family to talk to. And then, I got a little bit older, and I didn't think it was cool to go to church. Like, it's not, you never heard people at 12 years old talking about, hey, God talked to me last night in church. Like, you never heard of it. So I started to like not ever go to church and I started drifting away from God and it's like as I got older and got into middle school like I noticed that I was different from other people in my grade because my grade is a very like church going grade and so I started I was like yo I gotta start going to church and we started looking for a new church home and of course we got here and we really liked it and I was a first few days for two years when I first started going here which that was really nice because that brought me closer to God and the little kids that came to this church. And then after my, no, after my first year, that one, I don't even know the month that it happened, um, my dad got told that he was going to have brain surgery. So, it was very hard for our family to go through that. So all I can do is lean on God. Like, when Dad told me, he sat us all down, and he said, no, listen, I'm going to have a very scary surgery, but I'm going to be okay. And so I started, the minute he told me, I was like, God, you got to be with us through this. Like, there is no telling what's going to happen to Dad. So I started leaning on God. I know both of my parents, grandparents are leaning on God. And when my dad got released from the hospital, like they were amazed that he got released at the time he did. So he came home, well then we got bad news, he got an infection and he had to go back. So me and my sister had an orthodontist appointment one day and we got the news that dad was going in for another surgery. So we had to move in up to the hospital. And I can remember when dad went into his second surgery, all I could do was pray. All I could say is God keep my dad in your hands because I know that's what's best for him right now. So then it was hard through everything and I know that my dad would be my follower through everything so I knew that I had to be there for him through everything. So then we got through all that, some of course some hardships happened in between and then I found this guy that I thought I was in love with and I thought I was going to be with him forever and I was with him for 11 months, and I did not go to church for 11 months because he would not let me go to church. And I was so hard on me because I was so close to Matthew and Kara and their kids, and I was so close to all the kids that came to this church. They never leave God for anybody. Like, I, that's one of my biggest things, don't leave God for anybody. And during that 11 months that I was with this guy, of course, I didn't talk to God. I didn't ever speak about God. I didn't have a relationship with him anymore. I started drinking, I started cussing, and I started doing everything I could to not follow God. I was not representing Him at all. And yes, you, we all make mistakes and nobody's perfect, but God forgave me for that. And that's, that's a lot. I was not following Him at all. I was disrespecting Him. I was cussing. I was doing everything He does not want anybody to do. So then, after 11 months, I, that guy had left me, and I was absolutely heartbroken. I was depressed. I was lost. I did not know what was going to happen next. And I started to blame God for what had happened. I didn't understand why somebody could hurt me that bad, why God let it happen. And so then I came to church. It was probably two weeks after he broke up with me. And I was so scared that Matthew and Kara were going to hate me because I had left church and didn't, didn't come to church. And I talked to Matthew and Kara that night for probably 15 minutes before service just talking about random things that had happened in that 11 months. And I, I will never forget this talk because in my phone I have like a whole page of notes from this night of Matthew talk. And it's all about rejection and how God has so much rejection in his life that 
we can never follow in his rejection steps. And I thought one breakup was bad, but he has so many kids and so many people just rejecting him every single day that it's like I would hate to go through that every day. And so as I was preparing for this, I was reading through that, and it just brought everything back to when I rejected him, and I knew how I felt when I got rejected, so I can only imagine what God felt. And then I started, after that night, I had to call somebody about it, so I called Mariah, and she's like, you know, maybe that's something that you need to hear tonight, and I was like, yeah. And so then the next day at the lunch table, which I had never talked to God about, or talked about God at the lunch table, me and Mariah had a full-on conversation about God that week, and every single day we were talking about what God was doing in our life. And so then I got really big in the church and stuff, and then I had another life-shattering thing happen. A couple of months ago, someone that was very close to me was in an accident, and he passed away. And that night, when my mom told me who it was who passed away, all I could say was, God had a plan for Casey. And that plane ended tonight. Nobody knows why that plane ended, but something happened to make that plane end. Nobody, still nobody knows, but we have an idea of why God took his life that night. And then I came to church the next week and we talked about God taking lives. And so I knew that he was talking to me about it. And I had talked to Matthew and Kara about whether I was going to move away from school or whether I was going to stay home because if I moved away, I would have to drive an hour to come to church every Wednesday. And that was really going to be hard for me. And so then all I could do, we talked about one night, we talked about decision making. And I went home that night and I told my parents, I was like, guys, I don't know about my move away. I was like, God talked to me again tonight and I think I want to stay home. And they're like, Taylor, you've been planning to move away for a year now. And I'm like, yeah, but I would going to stay. So I changed my entire life plan to stay here and go to church and start being something that God wants me to be. And then now I go to church almost every week. I wake up on Sunday mornings and I'm like, dude, I'm tired. But I, gave a, I gotta get up and go to church. Like, that's just, I feel so much better after going to church every Wednesday and every Sunday just because I want to. And I know now that after everything I've been through through the past three years probably, that God has a plan for everybody. He has a plan for everything, whether you know it or not, because I sure did not see myself going this way three years ago. Um, but He has the ultimate call, and it doesn't matter what you want. It's going to happen the way He wants it. And so I have three points tonight. And one is never choose somebody over God, because that was the biggest mistake of my life, because I love God, the ultimate person in my life for somebody that I knew was going to obviously leave me one day. And two, no matter what you want, God has a final plan. Like, like I said, I did not see myself talking in front of you guys three years ago because I hate talking in front of people. And then three is don't keep God inside and let him out. Like, it doesn't matter how bad you think it's weird to talk about God. Let him out. Let him, let people know what he's doing in your life. Like, I started posting on Facebook every time that God does something in my life. And people were like, I need to hear that today. I need to know what God does in your life. So maybe you can do it in mine. And it's just, like, God's changed me a lot in the past three years. Like, I went from an okay person to an awful person. And now I'm going back up into the okay range. But don't ever let somebody tell you that God's not real or that God doesn't know what he's doing in your life because trust me, he does. Because I know from the fact that through everything my family has been through, I hear it every day. People are like, dude, you have changed a lot. And yeah, God's taking me down places that I thought I didn't want to go. But I've learned from those mistakes and I'm fixing those problems that I have today. Like, I used to never talk to anybody. And now, I mean, my best friend is out of church with me. And I talk to everybody. Like, I see kids at church that I see them in the store and they run up to me and give me a hug. And they're like, how's your day going? My day's going awesome. Thanks for talking to me. And I work at the bank and people talk about God all the time to me. And I'm like, hey, you should come to church tonight. I'm like, well, where are you going to church? You like the part You should come. And they're like, okay, we'll try. And they don't come, but, you know. <laughs> but all I have for you is that that's my story with God. And, you know, this is where to take you. Because it's been rough the past three years, but God has taken me here now. And this is not something I do. So.
week we're out on Lord Ferris. She was telling me the one of our greatest fears uh, statistically is speaking in front of other people. Eric is shaking her head. I know that's right. And the second one is death, right? So number two is death and one's public speaking. So if you had to choose at, at the funeral, you would rather be the one in the casket rather than the one speaking the funeral, right? Isn't that crazy? So crazy. So uh, tonight, everybody will stand. Uh, I'm so proud of Taylor. I, I, I want to brag on her for a minute. Um, it's one thing to come in and and, and share a message. Uh, that's not easy. There's a lot of pressure with that. It's another thing to make that very, very personable about how you have had faults and failures and uh, and I'm so proud of that message. And to me, there's not a person in here, nor will there ever be a person that will walk this earth uh, that deserves God's grace. Right? There won't be a person that can earn God's grace. And the good news is, we don't have to. That's the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ is that because of what He did upon that cross and three days later raising from the dead... He has given us an invitation to be saved. Taylor said something very, uh, very important. She, she said that he used to not come up in conversation, right? Jesus didn't come in, up in conversation. If he's not coming up in your daily conversation, then how much of an impact can he possibly be in our lives, Right? I find myself, when I am the closest to Jesus, I find myself talking to Him to complete strangers because He's always on my mind. And that's a Willie Nelson song, if you don't know. He's always on my mind. Did He come up in conversation this week? Has He come up in a conversation with a friend or a stranger or a co-worker or a classmate or a family member this month? These are questions you've got to begin to do an internal check and, and see where you are presently uh, with your relationship with Jesus Christ. None of us can earn it. None of us, none of us deserve it. But it's there for the taking if you just believe. It's by grace we have been saved through faith. I, uh, I'll close with this. The prodigal son, the story of the young man that, that, that took uh, took his father's wealth and he ran away and squandered it. And he ran out and he was drinking and he was he was cursing, he was uh, he was partying, uh, he was doing all these different things that, that Taylor talked about, that, that I talked about for my life, and many of you guys have experienced. He did all these things. And the greatest Part of that story is the gospel. The gospel message is that while he was a long way off, Jesus spotted him and he saw him. And you know why? The, the dad was a representation of Jesus. The reason that's so important is, is because he has been looking for you the whole time that you were partying, that you were making mistakes, that, that you were doing all these things, that you were running away. Jesus was looking at you and waiting for the opportunity for you to, to allow yourself to be caught up in his goodness and his love while you were a long way off. You know where we get saved at? We get saved and it, the, the moment that we met that we're a sinner and we need a Savior. I got saved at my very worst. Why? Because it didn't matter to him. He wasn't intimidated by my sin. He wasn't embarrassed. As a matter of fact, he, he knew about it the whole time. Jesus is so good. He's so good no matter where you are tonight.